Teresa Copeland, and I want to invite you to my show, The Big Sell. Are you ready to stop being a small player in a big world? Are you ready to decommoditize your business? Are you ready to stand aside from the competition? Join me every week on The Big Sell. Very dear friend of mine, but he is Justin Bird, the president of Team Velocity. And Team Velocity is a technology-driven organization that automates omni-channel communications in the automotive industry. Okay, Justin, I kind of knew you back when you were just an executive at the Chrysler Corporation. Welcome to my show. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so very much, Lisa, for having me. Well, tell us about Justin Bird. Tell, you know, I'm going to take that back. I'm going to give the audience a little background. In 2010, <laughs> oh, I have to, Justin, I have to. In 2010, Justin Bird stood on a stage in Detroit and looked in the faces of 300 very weary automotive dealers who had just come out of 2008 and 2009. And he stood up and he told us, he said, when was the last time you did something for the first time? And that's when he was uh, the vice president at Fiat brand. And he was very integral in the launch of Fiat. I think I might've been the only one awake that cold, cold day in Detroit. And, but when I heard you speak that first time, it inspired me because I thought, why in the world would I want to get involved with trying to launch this little car when we're just barely coming out of a coma of an industry? But then this young executive stood up and he lit up the room and you and I have been friends ever since. So there's the back story about how Justin and I know each other. <laughs> <laughs> Those are very fond memories. They are very fond memories, but guess what? That's why we have a rear view mirror. Those are the past. I want to talk about Justin Bird, Team Velocity 2018. You guys are sure. absolutely crushing it when it comes to technology. You are the absolute go-tos in the automotive industry. And I want to, I want to talk about it. I want you to brag about your company. Sure. You know, for us, um, you know, it's been a very um, awesome ride. I would tell you the last five years, a lot of strategic bets that we've made on where the puck was actually going in the automotive industry. Uh, we were able to predict those right. You know, we saw probably around five years ago, the industry was really heading towards this um, really interesting path of literally dealers were, were dying by a death by a thousand paper cuts. They had 10, 15, 20 different vendors, different messages, all going to the same customer and really adding fragmentation to the market. So we knew very early on that we need to invest in technology that can not only for one allow us to scale our business to make sure that we can impact our various clients that we do across the country, but we knew we had to start from a point of integration. You know, what we were beginning to see in the industry was a lot of one-off solutions that were trying to be patched work together to try to be one solution. So what we said is very early on is we wanted to build it all in-house, build it from a, from a technology base so we can help our clients in the automotive industry. And I am very, very proud to say that we continue to make great strides forward. And the success of our clients is the true report card that we utilize to identify success. Okay, just go ahead and put the contract in front of me, Justin. I'm already ready to sign up with you. Um, My pin or your pin. <laughs> uh, explain to our viewers and our listeners, what is explain omni-channel you know we, we hear it all the time omni-channel omni-channel what does that mean yeah we'll see for for some you know it becomes a buzzword for some it's like the word or the phrase of the month if you will but omni-channel for us is making sure that there is a consistent message that is highly targeted across all the marketing mediums the challenge becomes today is that some dealers are in a situations where they're trying to put band-aids on things that really require surgery. And for us, what we want to do is we want to take down a lot of the stereotypes that exist in the car business. And the truth of the matter is, is a lot of consumers believe that car, car dealers are out to do them wrong. But when you ask them really, well, where do you get that from? Where does that stereotype actually exist from? What consumers have oftentimes showed us are the various communications that they receive from dealers. There's a different price on every medium. There's a different message. And the consumer has no idea that the dealer is really trying to see what sticks or what really resonates. But what translates to the consumers is a lack of distrust. And I've been around car dealers my whole life. It's actually generational in my family. And I knew that wasn't really the, the real reality of it. So we said, how do we go about helping dealers, specifically to, through technology, to have a consistent message that is highly targeted across all the mediums? It's so interesting how sometimes we make this business highly, highly complicated, but it is very, very simple. It's about being truthful, transparent, and consistent across all of your touch points. 
Well, and I'm, I'm going to take up for the car dealers because I agree with you that sometimes you have one ad in the paper, one ad on the internet, one ad on your mailer, yeah. one ad on your website. I get it. And it isn't even from them trying to be uh, not transparent. It's because you got four different people and it's just, you know, without a system like yours, without something that we're, it sounds to me like it's a plug and play where I put it in once sure. and then it, it goes to all of my different mediums. You know, I can tell you two years ago, I didn't have that luxury or I didn't have that yeah. technology. And so, yeah, you're constantly like, oh God, it does, does my mailer match my website, match my Facebook, <laughs> blah, blah. It's, it's a nightmare. And so it, it sounds like, you know, um, I, mine and your mutual good friend, Sharon Lecter, she says you have a good business, yeah. you solve a problem, serve a need. So you it, got it. it sounds like you guys have solved a problem that I think dealers face. And again, not because I think they're trying to be sketchy. I think it's really because it's, it's five different places and sometimes three different people having to patch that information. Hands down. I mean, you just hit the nail right on the head. And what we like, I mean, we are very pro dealer here at our organization. You know, we love technology. Technology is the foundation by which it, everything that we do here at our organization. But we believe that technology is only going to help to improve the human engagement or the human interaction. We don't believe that it's going to replace it, nor do we want it to. Oh, so you're not trying to be like Elon Musk and, and replace humans with technology? That's not working out very well for him right now. And I love Elon. <laughs> No, I got it. Very uh, powerful visionary. Uh, but our vision is that how do we utilize technology to only improve human engagement? Uh, and what we found is through our technology platform that we have called Apollo, it's helping dealers do that all across the country. Okay, so it's called Apollo. Why? Because it's a spaceship? It's, it's ready to go to space? What? Uh, we are definitely, you know, we, we have a, a founding principle here that says uh, the sky is the limit only for those that don't believe that there's footprints on the moon. And we believe that there are footprints on the moon, so we're not going to stop until we get there. Tell us about your chairman and your founder. He's a wonderful person, Sean Woofington. Yeah, so Sean is a great visionary in the automotive space, uh, someone who's been highly decorated, uh, true visionary. Uh, but I guess the real benefit that we have as an organization is our entire leadership team uh, really is, has been in automotive for quite some time and have always been in a, had a, a mindset of really going about helping dealers. You know, our CEO here daily is Mr. David Boyce, who's someone who's been very vocal in our industry talking about integration, which is what we do as an organization. But I'm just so proud to be with business partners who really have a vision, not only for the industry, but a heart for the people that are within it. And we've dedicated our time, our resources, and our strategies to help us complete that mission. Now, are you strictly just automotive? Like, you know, would you handle a boat dealer or RV dealers or something like that? Yeah, so, uh, you know, we are specifically automotive, but I will tell you in the last 18 to 24 months, what has been one of the fastest growing segments of our business is this new adjacent vertical that, we are, that we're now in, which is RV, marine, and motorsports. And we represent some of the biggest across the country. But what it showed us is that sometimes you have to take off your singular blinder and realize that the need that you actually are solving for happens to be across some adjacent verticals. For us, we believe anything that has an engine in it is a business that we can go about helping. You know, I learned this from a man that I think everyone on the screen here knows, Mr. Roger Pinsky. Uh, it, during my fiat days, I had several, several meetings with Roger, and I oftentimes took, you know, wisdom and insights from him. And he said, Justin, you always want to diversify yourself, but stay within your core competency. And we believe our core competency is this automotive industry, but it's a little bit larger than that than anything that has an engine in it. Our technology can plug and play and help those dealerships perform. Well, so then it would be the transportation industry. And I had lunch with a mutual friend of mine and yours today, Renee Bangelsdorf, one of the top jobs ah. in the country. And she said, tell my friend Justin Bird I said hello. So can you oh, even, hey. yes, so can you even break into aviation? I mean, I mean, all of it. You know, at, at this point, the momentum is at a level where we don't want to put any brakes on it. We obviously are going to stay within our core competency, but you tell Renee, just pick up the phone and call me. <laughs> Yeah, she was jealous. She's like, oh, my God, I want to be on Facebook with Justin, too. And then she also told me to remind you and Sean that it was time for you guys to, to upgrade that jet. <laughs> That's definitely on the bucket list one of these days, but we're still commercial for today. Just for today, huh? Okay, so um, <laughs> let's, let's, let's talk about, you know, um, you know, Sean and you put on a fantastic event every year, Automotive Leadership Roundtable. And I don't know, let's see, I met Jewel and Bruce Hornsby one year. 
And it really wow. is a celebration of the number one dealers in the country. And it's a wonderful celebration because it's not easy being number one. And in fact, I've met very, you know, very dear friends of mine at that event that are still my friends today. And, um, sure. you know, why, why do you guys do that? Why do you celebrate the best of the best? And most of them are you your know, clients. And I'm, I'm going to guess they're all your clients. They happen to be number one they're, and they're your clients. Hmm. They're not all, they're not all our clients, but you know, it, it takes me back to a, um, to a phrase that my father said to me when I was 14 years old, you know, I was getting a little spunky, if you will. And my life was kind of heading in a direction that I wasn't proud of. And my father looked me square in the face and he said, son, if you show me your friends, I will show you your future. Oh. And that's a sentiment that just sat with me and it really changed my trajectory in my life. And it's something that we kind of live as an organization is we want to surround ourselves with the best and the brightest. And I think today social media has done a lot for basically what I believe is minimizing the process to be successful. It's very good at highlighting those that are number one or that are very successful, but we like to get into the real journey and because everyone likes the destination, but we like the journey and the journey to being number one in automotive, specifically in today's environment that has changed so dramatically. It is something to be celebrated. Also, too, we, we serve an industry that has pressures from every angle. People literally trying to take the customers away from the dealers themselves. And we don't believe that that necessarily is going to be the real true future. So what we like to do is we like to aggregate the best of the best in the country, which happen to be the number ones, talk to them about the insights and the best practices. But then what we do is we share that information because another founding principle that we have is that information is only powerful when it's shared. And a lot of the strategies that have been shared at that Automotive Leadership Roundtable has helped many dealers across the country. So it's an event that a lot of dealers look forward to every year definitely one that we look forward to and we're already planning and getting excited for 2019. Well, and it's such an aspirational event. And, you know, I think that, you know, call it what you want to, and I will never be ashamed of the fact that we always ran to be number one and any sales organization should, because if you're, sure. you know, if that is not what you aspire to be, if you don't aspire to be the top in your industry, the thought leader, whatever, then you're probably, in my personal opinion, in the wrong business. But you guys are the only ones that I know that celebrate, um, you know, the number ones, but you know, but just, just the aspirational aspect of it. And then, of course, you all bring together thought leaders that really, that really help you think. And, and, you know, so it is not a big vendor fest and it's not a big um, trying to sell you stuff. It really is, you know, what they say is iron sharpens iron. And I'm not Cardone there and Brian Benstock and Chris from uh, Kelly Auto Group and my dear friend Adam Aaron, yeah. Patriot. I mean, just the the cream of the crop, you know, and of course <laughs> I wasn't going to say any names cause then I would leave somebody out. But uh, <laughs> most of those people, I mean, all of them I met because of that event. And so I'm, I'm very grateful for that, but that just shows the oh. integrity of your organization. And it just shows from, from the top down that, you know, um, you, you guys aspire to be number one from a technology standpoint. So when you say it's taken you years to build this technology, that doesn't happen overnight. So, so do you roll this technology out in phases? How does that work? Yeah, so the technology has continued to grow literally as the needs of our clients have uh, changed. And I will tell you some of the best um, development that we've had inside of our technology has really come from our clients. When you input, when you input uh, strategies that, that we have and technology that we have inside of our stores, it's the best proving ground. You know, there's nothing like a showroom. And if you want to see if something can break, you want to put in a showroom. If you want to see if something can fly, put into a showroom. We just happen to partner up with some of the best dealerships across the country. They really are partners of ours. And I know sometimes the, the term team and family and partners kind of thrown around, but it, we truly mean it and we truly believe in it because really that's how our technology has come to be as strong as it is today because of the great feedback from our clients. It has developed in stages and phases because of the needs. You know, the needs that are happening in today showrooms have changed dramatically and you have to have a technology platform that is moldable enough or modular enough to be able to add things on because there are still some things that are not yet included in the technology but soon will be just because of where we continue to see the, the puck going but again you know to answer your question specifically you know it definitely has changed over time but it's only been able to do that on the backs of a lot of our great clients who provide really great daily feedback well would you like to call out a few of your clients or is is, is that not allowed 
I mean, you always have to have um, You know, right? it, would, it would truly be, it would truly take up probably two hours to list off all of them. Uh, we are just grateful to have all the clients that we do today um, because it allows us to be able to provide for the great employees that we have in our organization. I will tell you too, one of the other great backbones about our technology are the people that are behind it developing it. You know, one of the things in our organization that we firmly believe in is that we are just one gigantic wheel and all of our people are an individual spoke. And there is not one spoke that's on our wheel that does not matter. Everyone matters in making sure that we can continue to turn at the momentum that we have. You know, because my grandfather used to say, son, if life ever gives you a chance to be good, be great. And we are definitely in that mode where we're trying to be great. We're obviously always in the lookouts for other great, talented individuals that want to join our team to help us continue that momentum. But we're very fortunate for our clients, and we're very, very thankful and appreciative of all of our great associates across the country. Justin Bird, I've said this since the day I met you. I think you need to run for president because there's a way that you can get around every question <laughs> with, with, with a fabulous statement. So it sounds like uh, Team Velocity, if there's any rock stars out there, that they should throw their resumes up there. Is that correct? Oh, man, we, we, we have a unicorn farm here. If you're out there in the industry and you believe that you're a unicorn, don't rub the horn off. Just look for a unicorn form where you can jump and, uh, and parade around with others. And I'll tell you, too, this industry is one of these industries where if you can last, you know, this is one of these lasting industries. This is one of these lasting businesses. And, you know, I think you and I have maybe talked about this before, but there's a sentiment that I share that's called SOD SAT. And it's S-O-D-S-A-T. And what it stands for is somebody ought to do something about that. There are just certain belly pings that I've had throughout my career in automotive that, you know, at first I used to think it was weird that, man, am I the only one that's pro dealer? Am I the only one thinking this way? Am I the only one that wants to help dealerships improve processes and communications and touch points? And for a while there, I kind of felt like I was alone. And I will often, and I also will tell you that, you know, the times in your life where you're going to feel the worst is when you feel like you're alone. But the truth of the matter is, is that there are others that have the same passions that we have. It's just our challenge to go out and find them. So when I found my business partners here at Team Velocity and I saw what the great mission was and the values behind the people that were driving it, I literally said, man, just put me on the team. And we send that same sentiment out to all of your viewers. If, if you're out there and you get in a sod sat moment, there's something in your belly that says, you know what? I don't want to give up on the dealer network. I think that there is a chance for the, us to continue to thrive and be extremely relevant in the future. And you're a unicorn. Submit your resume. Go to teamvelocity.com. Well, it sounds like not only did I get a great interview from you, but it sounds like uh, I, I might be able to help employ some really amazing people. Um, <laughs> okay, so Justin, so now, you know, now we know what you do, um, and I personally know what you're about, but I would like to take you, you know, one thing that, again, you and I have always been very good friends, and so one of the things I've always appreciated is that you're somebody that roots for people, and I know that you've always personally rooted for me and opened doors for me to help me any way you could. Um, where did, where did that come from? Because, you know, I am so, I don't know. I mean, nobody can be in my inner circle if you're not the kind of person that roots for people and celebrates other people's success. Because I believe that success comes along when, when you take everybody along for the ride. Where, where do you think that that value came in you? Like, where, where, where did that start? I always hear you tell stories about your, your, your grandmother and your grandfather, which I wish I could have known them because oh, they man. sounded amazing. You know, my... You know, my grandparents um, really grew up in a time where, uh, you know, they weren't very book smart, but they were common sense geniuses. And they didn't say a lot of words, but the few words that they said kind of resonate with you. And it's literally been food for my entire life. And, you know, I remember growing up as a kid and, you know, having big dreams and having big aspirations and, you know, wanting to do things on a grand level and sometimes having these thoughts of, man, am I dreaming too big or is that too crazy? And, uh, you know, having self-doubt and having insecurities and, you know, all those goofy thoughts that, you know, go through our head. And, you know, I remember talking to my grandmother once and, you know, there was a period in her life where she lived with us and because uh, her health was starting to worsen. And she says, baby, to the world, you may be just one person, yeah. but to one person, you just might be their world. And... When she said that to me, it just, I don't know, it just, it, 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 you know, it, 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 it sparked something inside of my soul. And throughout my life, as I've continued to go on about and have an abundance of success, um, there have been so many people along the way that have, you know, guided me, that have corrected me, that have encouraged me. And 
you know, I always felt like my tax was to make sure that I did the same for others. You know, I oftentimes tell my parents that I would like for my life to stand for the sacrifices that they made for me that I will never know about. So when I saw you and I met you for the first time, I just got this belly ping and I knew you were special. And I didn't know how it was going to all unfold, but I knew that I had to communicate it to you. I knew I had to tell you about it because I just thought maybe somewhere along the way it would spark a flame inside of you. You know, it's you clearly had a very years. strong. I'm sorry. It's been, years. it's been eight years since you and I met. If you don't know that. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. It is so funny. I knew you had a very strong pilot light. And I said, man, if I could just throw a little bit of gas on that, we probably could create a real big forest fire and look at you today. And it's, you know, big smiles. But I also say that to anyone that's watching, you know, you know, success is, is a lot of times portrayed as this individual feat. But what I like to do is I like to just think back to those people who, in some cases, what I thought tried to hurt me or block me. Uh, because there's a there's a there's a saying out there that says a wise person has the ability to build a strong foundation with the bricks that are thrown at them. So don't take the bricks that are being thrown at you as something that's meant to crumble you. Take it as is meant to build a strong foundation in you, in you for you to grow and to be what you were truly meant to be. And I think that's really where it comes from me because when it's all said and done in my life, you know, I would love to be sitting on a cloud one day with the man and, you know, let's just look at the impact, you know, because I think this world has a, a real big power of trying to minimize us. But when I see great people, I, I don't mind being awkward and I'll just communicate it to them heart to heart and whatever they do with it, it's on them. So, you know, we're, we're in a pretty rough and tumble industry, you know that. And um, that being said, you have been somebody who's pretty, who has been very um, transparent, authentic. And, you know, um, for some of the guys out there, um, how is that, God, I'm trying to say this the right way, how has that played for you? Because I think so many men and women in this industry feel like you've got to be tough, 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 or you will not oh. garner the respect of an industry. Do you have any words of wisdom oh. for that? Listen, I don't know if they're words of wisdom, but I'll give you some words that I kind of live by. You know, uh, I firmly believe that life treats you the way that you treat it. And there was a period in my life and specifically in my automotive career where I wanted to be tough. And I wanted to be tough because that's what I was around and that's what I saw. But it wasn't really who I was internally. And that conflict is something that I had to deal with every day that I left the office. You know, I was coming from this tough environment where I was, I'm, I'm really a sensitive guy. Um, and I said, you know what, there's got to be a certain truth in me. And I'm not saying that I cried every day, but, you know, just being open and honest with my emotions and specifically with my employees and learning a, a powerful word called empathy. You know, empathy doesn't mean that you can't be tough and hold people accountable to go out and get their goals and get their results. But it does at least show that you have an approach. Uh, and I firmly believe that life does boil down to your approach and having an, an open mind, having an open heart and being able to understand things from people's perspective uh, has really helped me. And I share that with any one of you out there. You know, I think a lot of times we get these big titles and people get shares and, you know, you get the money and all of a sudden it can go to your head. But I remember the days when I was broke and I remember the advice and counsel that I needed and or wanted. And I just wanted to tap into those emotions once I was successful. You know, I remember working for some executives that said, hey, Justin, if you really want to go out there and kill it, you would need to learn how to adapt the good habits that you learn in bad times and apply those in the good times. And I said to myself, wow, that's pretty impactful. So I would just encourage everyone that's out there in your audiences, don't get punch drunk over your title and what's in your bank account. Really go out there and make a true impact amongst your people. Because at the end of the day, we're nothing as an organization without our staffs. And people know when you're investing in them. You know, I, I say that, you know, uh, you know, the, the truth has a ring to it. And when you're communicating with people, people can feel you a lot greater than they hear your words. So just make sure that people can really feel to understand what you're trying to communicate. And I think that's where you're going to get the best results. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, I had a gentleman on my show the other day and I just I'm crazy about him, Glenn Lundy, and he is the number two used car dealer in the country. He is um, he he's in Paris, Kentucky. And ah. Yeah, population of 9,000, but they sell 12,000 cars a year. And the reason he joined that group eight years ago as the general manager is because he actually left the auto industry. He left because he'd been highly bullied, and it was ah. terrible. He had, he had lost custody of his daughter. I'm, not, I'm just sharing a story he shared on the show. He lost custody of his daughter. He lost his relationship. He lost a lot of things. And when he came back to work um, for this auto group, which I'm just drawing a blank, that's why otherwise I'd say it, um, uh, he, he sat down with the, with the owners, with the dealers, and he said, 
we're going to write everything we hate about the industry. But the bottom line is, is that he has come out against bullying in the automotive industry. And bullying is so much about, it isn't so much, I just took away your lunch money, but it's so much about, you know, just that hierarchy that, you know, oh, sure. uh, publicly dressing people down, you know, disrespecting people that work for you or work under you because you think you're better than them. And I, you and I both know that everybody's just one cut away from the top. But, you Amen. know, I think bullying is a mentality, and I think it's it's so big in this industry, and I love what, um, it's Dan Cummins Chevrolet. See, this is what happens, you get old, it comes to you a little bit sooner, or a little bit later. Dan Cummins Chevrolet, Paris, Kentucky, Glenn Lundy, but, you know, he, he has built an entire, I mean, he's, I mean, they've actually written a book about it. And ah. um, it just shows, and so, and so from the time he got there eight years ago to now, they've increased business 800%. Number two used car dealer in the nation per auto remarketing uh, in a town of 9,000. And that's because they've built an incredible culture of people that root for them and yeah. customers that root for them. And so there is something to being kind in this world. And I sure. think that's something that our industry has got to get their mind around. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Listen, I couldn't agree more. And my hat's off to uh, the great things that they're doing down there in Paris, Kentucky. You know, because I, you know, not to make any sort of political statements, but I do believe that there is an emotional disconnect today that's happening in our society. And I literally think bullying and other factors in that same realm, it is really it is a Twitter? scream for help. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is it, is it called Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate bully. I don't want to name the platforms, but I will tell you, I do believe that in our society today, there is a little bit of a, uh, a push for emotional disconnection. And what I really think is a lot of people are screaming out to be connected and specifically to be connected to things with a purpose. I'll tell you for us specifically, you know, as we go about continuing to refine and improve our technology, we found that a lot of uh, our employees literally show up because they're like, hey, we want to be a part of the mission. We want to be a part of the culture. And uh, so hats off to those guys in, in Paris, Kentucky and continue success, because what I found is that in today's environment, I do believe that there is a high level of demand for this empathetic leadership. It's not saying that people don't want to be held accountable, but they do want some acknowledgement of their feelings, their approaches, their ideas, their suggestions. And when you make people feel value, they bring value. You know, and that's just it, you know, asking people to work the hours. Anyways, I'm not going to get off on that with you. One thing before we, we uh, wrap up, I want to congratulate you because you were just recently named uh, to our board of directors for the women in automotive. Um, and we're so excited to have you and to have you serve because, you know, and, and you were, you were uh, appointed because of many things, your leadership skills. Um, but I'm going to tell you more importantly than anything, for me, when I did the vote, it was for your heart and it was your, for your heart for oh. people and for the disenfranchised and for people that just aren't the normal status quo for the automotive industry. I mean, I mean I've seen you go out and, and fight for people that maybe nobody else would fight for. Um, I cannot tell you, you know, getting that phone call was, um, you know, my older son dreams of being in the NBA and getting drafted number one. And the only thing I could connect to that potential future emotion was when I got the phone call that I was uh, now a part of the Board of Directors for Women in Automotive. Uh, it is a great honor of mine. I dedicate myself to serving uh, and I'm really going to pour the passion into women in automotive. The same level of passion has been poured into me. So many people have made certain accommodations for me throughout my career because, you know, I was a little different. You know, I was a little fired up, uh, a little passionate. Uh, and people kind of guided me. And that's what I want to dedicate my life to, specifically in this industry. Uh, I was raised by a very, very strong woman and my mother. There are a lot of strong women in my family. So trust me, they're going to make sure that we keep this thing on 10 and 2. But I'm so honored to be a part of uh, the great movement behind the women in automotive. And I cannot wait to serve and to provide whatever value I can to that great organization. Well, and that's, that's what we talked about with you, because uh, I reminded my fellow board members, I said, you know, he, the original conference, you know, Justin had people there, and I was the closing keynote speaker, and I'll never forget these young, very, very talented young ladies came up to me, and they said, we're here because of Justin Bird, and um, <laughs> if, if you need us to carry your bag, we will, and I was like, uh, Justin didn't tell you that. They're like, well, no, but all we want to do is serve you and make sure, and we want to learn. And it was just so cool. And you have, so you and Team Velocity have, have supported the Women in Automotive Conference since, since day one. And you have supported by, by sending 
uh, your female employees, um, and of course all the great support that you've given me when I've called and tried to um, pick your brain about some stuff. So it, it's very well deserved that that Thank spot. You so much. And we're so excited. Um, Justin will be at our conference uh, June 24th through 26th. He'll be speaking. I'm not sure when and where he's speaking yet, so I can't give you a date, an exact time. But uh, I just want to encourage all of you out there, you know, just to show that, you know, we're building a movement. And I think the movement isn't about women. It's about people. And it's about that Amen. everybody deserves an elevated experience. Everybody deserves the same, whether you're black, white, woman, man, gay, straight, whatever it is. And I think that has been our movement. Um, we just, but what we needed to get it started was the women to mobilize it. And that's what we've done. Very well said. And, um, and now, and now the men who have always supported us are joining and with, with you being one of those men. And so I'm just, I'm forever grateful, Justin, and uh, I'm grateful for our friendship and all the advice you've given me over the years. Sometimes I don't always want to listen to you because you're like my brother. And so you tell me things I don't want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> you don't always agree with me, darn it. <laughs> and I'm sure That's not what it's about. I know, and I'm sure you're just going to leave it at that. But anyways, I am so grateful for your time today. I wish you and Sean Thank you for having me. Yes, and Team Velocity continued success as you guys blaze the trail in the automotive industry as you continue to, you know, uh, bring technology to the forefront because that's what's going to keep our industry moving forward is great um, entrepreneurs and trailblazers like you and Sean and your team, of course. Thank you so very much and uh, continued success to everything that you do.